I always use these plugins in the Cubase control room. But if you're not using Cubase Pro and you don't have access to the control room, no worries. I'm going to show you how you can use these types of plugins in your own DAW. All right, so let's check this out. Now the control room in Cubase is found on the right zone and there's an insert tab at the bottom that you click on. And this is where you have access to eight inserts to add plugins. Now the plugins I have here are monitoring type plugins. Okay, and I'm gonna go through each of them in just a moment. Now, if you don't have Cubase Pro, you work with another DAW or another version of Cubase that doesn't have the control room, you can use these types of plugins on your master output channel. Okay, the only thing you're gonna need to be careful is to make sure you bypass the plugins that affects the sound of your mix, like a, a room correction plugin, for example, okay? You just make sure you bypass that plugin before you bounce your mix and you're good to go. So the way you can do this, so and I'm just gonna show you briefly before we jump in and look at all those plugins, is that you take your master output channel and you make sure you don't have any other plugins inserted on that channel. So all the mix bus processing, I would suggest to create a dedicated stereo group channel track, also known as a Nox channel, if you're not working in Cubase. And this is what I have on this session. So my stereo out channel is basically a group channel that is used as my main mix bus. Okay, so all of my tracks are gonna end up into this channel. And then that channel uh, will go to the main outputs of Cubase, which has its own channel. And this is where, if I'm not using the control room, I would insert all those monitoring type plugins. But if you work with Cubase Pro, you have access to the control room, activate the control room and start working with it. It is totally worth it. Okay, so now I have my first insert that I work with a lot uh, that is part of the control room and this one is called the session wire sand now this is part of the session wire system which is a kind of a zoom type of software that is also web-based that you use for online collaboration especially mixing revisions with clients and this is a tool that I work with a lot uh, in different ways. And one of the ways is when I do some mix revisions with a client, I open myself a session wire session. I send the link to my client to connect to the session. So it's a bit like a Zoom session. So I have my microphone, uh, my webcam, and same for my clients. We're both in the same session. I can share my screen, uh, my Cubase session also. And the session wire plugin that I have in the control room will send a signal coming out of Cubase straight into session wire because it's a bit more than the plugin. It's also an audio driver, which makes it pretty powerful. If you want me to do a full video on how I work and how I use Session Wire, let me know down below. I also use it within OBS, which is the software that I'm actually using right now as I make this video to screen record my Cubase. This is my OBS project I'm actually using right now. And right here, I have my microphone on top and on another channel, I can record the audio coming from Cubase. And I'm gonna use the same audio driver, which is the Session Wire plugin driver, if I can call it this way. And if I click on uh, properties, there you go. I see in device, the Session Wire driver, and that's it. If I click on play from Cubase, there you go. I have some signal, some audio coming out of Cubase in high quality and going straight into OBS. So this is how I make my videos and I record my audio coming out of Cubase and same when I do some live streams with my MCC members for mix feedbacks, I use OBS this way. And by having those plugins inserted within the control room, it's gonna send the full mix signal of my mix session. The next one on the list is a VU meter and it's one of the best out there. It's called the VUMT by uh, Clamhelm. It's a great plugin. It's not expensive. It's like 20 bucks or something. It's a very nice detailed uh, VU meter that works very well. You can calibrate it to the level you want 
and it's pretty useful for gain staging and stuff like that, you know? So I have it straight into the control room in Cubase. And if I need to use the VU meter when gain staging, I can only solo the channel I'm gain staging, open that plugin and that's it. And every time I solo a channel, it's gonna be monitored by this plugin from the control room. So it makes it easy to work with. So I don't use that all the time, but you know, when I need it, it's there. Uh, then I have one of my favorite graphic spectrum analyzer and this one is called span and the cool thing about this one is that it's free there's a plus version that i also purchased but this one is the free version and it's great this plugin is by a company called voxango it has been out for years and honestly it's one of my favorite free plugin go download it okay i'm gonna leave the link down below it's just great. So that is a spectrum analyzer, which is great uh, when mixing, uh, just to have an idea on the full uh, frequency spectrum of your mix. You can also use a graphic analyzer to analyze a mix reference. So this is actually pretty useful in this case. Now in my control room, the way I set everything up is that I have access to uh, my reference track within the control room by going from the mix to Q1. So I have my mix reference channel that is routed to Q1, and this is where I can switch within the control room from my mix to the uh, the reference mix, which is great because I can use all those reference plugins and analyze my reference mix compared to my mix. I'm not going to make a video on how to work with a graphic analyzer. If you want me to do so, let me know down below. I can make a full video about graphic analyzers in general, how to work with them, and also how you can work with the SPAN Voxango plugin. So if you want me to do it, this type of video, let me know down below. So next on the list is a Supervision. Now, Supervision is more than just a graphic analyzer. It has all sorts of different tools. So of course it has the graphic analyzer. It can have like a, a loudness metering system, a left and right metering, a uh, correlation meter, also a phase scope. And more than that, there's a bunch of monitoring modules you can add uh, to an instance of uh, supervision, which is quite nice. So I don't use it all the time, but if I need to, it's right there. And like most of these plugins, this one is going to be bypassed and I only activate it when I need it. And again, if you want me to do a video on supervision, let me know down below. And if I have enough demand, I'll make one. The next on the list is another type of a graphic analyzer. And this one is called Tonal Balance Control by Isotope. It's actually a very good one. It's different. And again, I'm very careful when I work with these types of plugins. I just use them to check if I'm in the ballpark or not. What's cool about this one is that it gives you a range of frequencies depending on the style of music you're mixing. And again, it's just to give you an idea, just to give you an idea and that's it, you know? So you can, uh, you can go with this type of fine look or a broad type of look. I kind of like the fine one. So it gives you a different perspective compared to a traditional spectrum analyzer. It's kind of cool. And the next one is Master Plan. Now this one, I use it in a very different way because it's mainly a mastering plugin. I actually made a full video on this one. If you want to watch it, I'm going to leave the link down below. Now, the cool thing about this plugin, it has a little option here, a feature where you can monitor your mix or your master on different types of systems, like a phone, for example. or a pair of NS10 speakers. Okay, so this is the way I'm gonna use this plugin when I use it. I don't use it all the time, but it's ready to go if I need to. So if I wanna spend like 15, 20 minutes mixing on NS10s, I can just activate the plugin, make sure it's set up to NS10, and that's it, I'm good to go. I don't use anything else apart from this little feature. That's it. It's a completely different story if I use this plugin when mastering, you know? Next, we have by Sonarworks Sound ID, which is a room correction software that I use when I mix with my studio monitors, okay? So I do a full analysis of my room with a microphone. The software does the measurements and then I apply the profile when I mix on my studio monitors. But when I mix with my studio headphones, which are the Odyssey MM500, great headphones. I don't use any Sound ID profile. 
I just use the headphones the way they are. I love how they sound like. But for headphones, you know, if I'm mixing on a laptop for a long period of time, I might use this last plugin on the list, which is the CLA NX Stereo, which is designed to mix with headphones to actually bring you into a studio space when you mix using headphones. Because while mixing in headphones, we don't have the room environment that we have when we mix on studio monitors. We're kind of in our own bubble with a left and right speaker, basically. We're kind of missing that natural bleed that we get when mixing with studio monitors. And this type of plugin helps to bring you back into a studio space. And again, I don't use it all the time. For the most part, when I mix on headphones, I just use the headphones as they are. But if I am mixing outside the studio for a long period of time, I might use this plugin once in a while just to bring me into a studio space when I need to. Now, my question to you, do you work with monitoring type plugins like these? And if you have Cubase Pro, do you work with the control room? Let me know down below. And I also want to know what monitoring type plugins you like to work with. Feel free to leave all other comments or questions you might have down below. Take care and I'm going to see you next time. Bye bye.